Hey, what's happening guys? Today, we're talking about LEDs and choosing the right current limiting resistor for your LEDs. It can seem like a daunting task because there are all kinds of LEDs. I mean, if you look here, we have some reds, some blues, some yellows, some greens, some whites. These are five millimeter LEDs. You also may be working with three millimeter LEDs. Well, when it comes to choosing the resistor, size doesn't matter. Either one will work with the same resistor, no problem. But to do this, there's a couple of things that we need to understand about our LEDs. Now, if you're buying your LEDs from a reputable parts house like DigiKey or Mouser or Arrow, you're going to be able to get data sheets for your LEDs and they'll tell you exactly how to bias them. But if you're not, if you're buying your LEDs off of AliExpress or Amazon or eBay or just about anywhere else, well then it's going to be up to you to figure out how to do that. So we're going to need to know a few things. We are going to need to know our V plus, which is the voltage source of the circuit. We are going to need to know the forward voltage of the LED, which is the cost of operating the LED in voltage. And I'll explain this all to you, so don't worry. Then we're going to need to know at what current we want to run the, the LED. And that becomes kind of the whole question of this. Where do you want to run it? Well, again, if you're buying your LEDs from a reputable source, then you're going to look at the data sheet. If not, <clears throat> we're going to go with a standard of 20 milliamps to run your LEDs. But that is just the standard. I actually recommend that you run them between 10 and 15 milliamps. There will not be much of a noticeable drop in the light output, and your LEDs will run so, so much longer. Are you with me so far? Good. All right, we're going to start with some rules of thumb for basic LED colors and their forward voltages. So these down here will be the forward voltage. So we start off with infrared LEDs. They are the lowest and their cost is about 1.2 volts. Next up, we have red LEDs, 1.9 volts. Yellow LEDs, right around 2.1 volts. Green LEDs kind of jump up there somewhere around 3 volts. Blue LEDs will be about 3.5 and a white LED could be as high as four volts. So these are our rules of thumb, but it gets much more complicated than that. In fact, I'm gonna show you a little chart here, and I will put a link to this chart down below where you can get it. Pardon my, uh, my toner and my printer has taken a crap, obviously. As you can see here, Depending on the chemistry of the LEDs and the number of elements in them, the voltages can be kind of wild. Like if you look here, super red, which uses gallium, arsenic, and aluminum? I'm not sure what that one, middle one is. It has three elements, a peak wavelength of 660 nanometers, and its forward voltage is between 1.1 and 2.2 volts. But now, if you come down here to uh, super high intensity red, 
uh, four elements, 2.6 volts. Then we have TS, I, got, I don't know what those are, 2.8 volts. But yeah, what I'm getting at is there are just a ton of different chemistries and number of elements. So these are just rules of thumb. All right, so now we know what we need to know about the LEDs, the forward, the uh, V plus, the forward voltage, and our target uh, current to run them at, and we can start to work this out. So to do that, we're going to go back to our old friend, Ohm's Law. So we'll draw the Ohm's Law triangle, which says that voltage is equal to current times resistance. So any one of these you need to find, you just use the triangle like this. You need to find voltage is equal to I times R. You need to find resistance, V divided by I. You need to find current, V divided by R. All right, so that's where we're at. We're going to use that formula, which is Ohm's Law. along with these constants and we're going to be able to write ourselves a little formula that's going to help us pick out our LED. So we're going to say V plus minus V forward times RC equals 20 milliamps. That's our formula. So using this, let's say we want to put in a red LED at 20 milliamps. And we're going to be running this, let's say, off of an Arduino. So then we know that our V plus is 5 volts. And we know that our voltage forward is 1 Point nine. So now we have 5 minus 1.9, which would give us, what, uh, 3.1 times RC equals 20 milliamps. So now all we need to do is solve for RC. We know V, we know I. So, V divided by I, 3.1 volts, divided by 20 milliamps. And that's going to give us a resistor value of about 155 ohms. And, of course, 155 ohms doesn't really exist in uh, standard resistors, but you know, you're just going to go and find whatever you have that is close. 100 ohms is okay. 150 ohms is okay. 220 ohms is okay. All right. So now you know how to do this. Let's take a look at a couple of practical examples. All right. So this should be a pretty uh, decent demonstration of forward voltage and its subjectivity as to the amount of light output. So here is a 100 ohm resistor. And what we're going to do, we're just going to come through each one of these. See, that is just stupid bright. 100 ohm resistor is no good for a red LED because you can see it is at 27 milliamps. All right, same with the yellow LED. Notice how it's not quite as bright, but it's still kind of stupid bright. And again, we're at 27 milliamps. Let's go to the green. And now you see things are starting to settle down from the red, which was super bright at 100 milliamps. The yellow, which was pretty bright. The green is okay at 100 milliamps. It's, it's right around 26, um, 26 milliamps there. So Now there's the blue. 
which looks stupid, incredible bright, but that's just because it's blue. It is in fact only pooling 17 milliamps, so 10 milliamps less than the red. And then here is white or clear, however you want to call it. Again, crazy bright, but only pulling 15 milliamps. So now let's take this from another perspective, okay? Remember I told you there won't be much of a noticeable light output. So here is our red LED with a 100 ohm resistor. So bright you can hardly even tell it's red. And again, pulling 27 milliamps. Let's replace that with a 470 ohm resistor. Okay, that is plenty bright enough to get your attention at any time. And now look. 4 milliamps. You wouldn't really notice the difference. I mean, it's hard to tell on camera. Here's the 100. Okay. Here's the 470. Not much of a difference that you would really notice. So I like the 470 on the red LEDs, but I'll go even further. Give me one second. If I'm using the, the LED just as an indicator, Well, in that case, I'll put in a 1K resistor. And now at 1K, we're hovering somewhere between 2 and 3 milliamps. And that is still plenty bright. And the nice thing about the 1K is it'll work with just about anything. And you see, when we get to the white LED... One milliamp and still plenty of light to let you know what's going on so then we get down to the last topic of the day which is kind of balancing your LEDs so let's say that we want to have a blue LED and a red LED. Well, the blue is going to be the brightest. So in this case, if I put in the 1K resistor, and then I put in the 470 ohm resistor, I know I just it's so hard to tell on, on camera, but those are pretty well matched. And that's, uh, that's the last thing I wanted to talk about today, was just matching. Um, you don't want one to be, you know, ten times brighter than the other one. It throws off everything. So spend some time with a couple of uh, resistors and make sure that your LED outputs are relatively close. And again, it's all subjective. All right, guys, I hope this little video about using LEDs in your projects was helpful. If it was, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.